Good day, everyone. I am Julius Cortez Zoera, a BPED 2C student. So for today, I will going to discuss the land ownership in the Philippines under the Americans. The Americans were aware that the main cause of social unrest in the Philippines was landlessness, and they attempted to put an end to the deplorable conditions of the tenant farmers by passing several land policies to increase the small landholders and distribute ownership to the higher number of Filipino tenant and farmers. The Philippine Bill of 1902 provides regulations on the disposal of public lands. A private individual may own 16 hectares of the land, while corporate landholders may have 1,024 hectares. Americans were also given rights to own agricultural lands in the country. The Philippine Commission also enacted Act No. 496 or the Land Registration Act which introduced the tyrant system to address the absence of earlier records of issued land titles and conduct accurate land surveys. In 1903, the Homestead Program was introduced allowing a tenant to enter into an agricultural business by acquiring a farm of at least 16 hectares. This program, however, was limited to areas in northern Luzon and Mindanao, where colonial penetration had been difficult for Americans, a problem uh, they inherited from the Spanish. During that time, uh, the Americans were already know that the major reason of the social unrest or the major problem of the Philippines was the landlessness or the state of being without land or without access to land or without having private ownership. That is why the Americans tried to solve, tried to stop these uh, miserable conditions to the tenant farmers. So they passed several land policies to increase the small landholders and to distribute ownership to bigger number of Filipino tenants and farmers. So first is the Philippine Bill of 1902 provided regulations on the disposal of public land. So in this bill, uh, it has been said that only 16 hectares can a private individual can own. While in the corporate landholders, uh, they may own 1,024 hectares. So also, of course, the Americans has the right to own agricultural land. So they also passed the uh, Philippine Commission Act number 496 states that the torrent system is applied to address this kind of problem. So if we talk about torrent system, it is a land registration. So they are the one who will inspect or maintain a register of land holdings uh, serve as an uh, conclusive evidence on the register as the proprietor. So, bali sila ang tig record sa mga papiles. So, in 1903, they introduced the Homestead Program, which allows the tenant to enter into agricultural business uh, by acquiring a farm at least 16 hectares. But the program was limited only on the area of Northern Luzon and Mindanao. Land ownership did not improve during the American period. In fact, it even worsened because there was no limit to the uh, size of land holdings people could possess and the accessibility of position was limited to those who could afford to buy, register, and acquire food property titles. Not all prior lands acquired by the Americans were given to landless peasant farmers. So some lands were sold or lost to American and Filipino business interests. This early land reform program was also implemented without support mechanism. So if a landless peasant farmer received land, he only received land, nothing more. Many were forced to return to tenancy and wealthy Filipino hacienderos purchased or firstly took over lands from farmers who could not afford to pay their debts. The system introduced by the Americans enabled more lands to be placed under tenancy, which lead to widespread peasant uprising, such as the Colorum and Sakdal uprising in Luzon. 
peasant and workers found refuge from millenarian movements that give them hope that change could still happen through milit militancy. Even though that the Americans passed several land policies during the American period, the land ownership did not improve. In fact, it even worsened. Why? It is because there was no limit to the size of land holdings people could possess. So only those who can afford to buy, register, and acquire fixed property titles were limited in terms of ownership. Also, not all friars' land acquired by the Americans were given to landless poor farmers. So it becomes worsened. It is because the land were sold or less to the American and Filipino business interests. So they also implemented land reform program without support mechanism. So if a landless peasant farmer received land, so he only received land, nothing more. So what happened? There is no changes. It will become worsened. Also, Filipino hacienderos took over lands from peasant farmers who can't afford to pay their debts. So why? Because there is no support mechanism. That is why a lot of lands placed under tenancy, which lead to widespread peasant uprising. That is why the land ownership becomes worsened because of this system. So such as the Colorum and Sakdal uprising in Luzon. So the peasant and the worker find a place for millenarian movements that give them hope that everything might change through militancy. The Sakdal or Sakdalista uprising was a peasant rebellion to central Luzon that uh, lasted for two days, May 2 to 3, 1935. It was easily crushed by government force then, but this historical event tells of the social inequality brought about by issues in land ownership and tenancy in the, the country. The Philippine word Sakdal means to accuse which is the title of the newspaper helmed by Benigno Ramos. He rallied support from Manila and nearby provinces through the publication, which led to the establishment of the Partido Sacdalista in 1933. They demanded reforms from the government, such as the abolition of taxes and equal or common ownership of land, among others. They also opposed the dominant nationalist party's acceptance of gradual independence from the United States and instead demanded immediate severance of ties with America. For a new party with a small cloth, they did will in the 1934 general election. Scoring three seats in the House of Representatives and several local posts, this encouraged them to attempt an uprising in 1935. Upon being crushed, Ramos fled to Tokyo and the Partido Sakdalista collapsed. The Sakdal or the Sakdalista uprising was a peasant rebellion, last only for two days, May 2 to 3, 1935. So if we talk about the Sakdalista uprising, these are the people joined the Sakdalista movement for exposing wrongdoings of politicians and for a justice system and are compassionate about the poor and oppressed. But they did not last longer since they easily crushed by the government forces. But this historical event tells the unfair system or social inequality in terms of land ownership and tenancy in the country. So Abinigno Ramos, he was the one who led the party to demand a reform from the government such as the abolition of taxes and equal of common ownership of land. So the nationalist parties accept to cut or end the connection or the relationship with America. So Ramos made a strategic shift towards seats in government position rather than uh, simply pushing a critical writing through newspaper. During the years of the Commonwealth government, the situation further worsened as the peasant uprisings increased and landlord-tenant relationship become more and more desperate. President Kizan laid down a social justice program focused on the purchase of haciendas which were to be divided and sold to tenants. 
His administration also created the National Rice and Corn Corporation, or NAREC, to assign public defenders to assess peasants in court battles for their rights to the land, and the Court of Industrial Relations to exercise jurisdiction over disagreements arising from land honor to land relationship. The Homestead Program also continued through the National Land Settlement Administration, or NLSA, Efforts towards agrarian reform by the Commonwealth failed because of many problems such as a budget allocation for the settlement program of, um, on widespread peasant uprising. World War II put a halt to an all interventions to solve these problems as the Japanese occupied the country. During the Commonwealth government, the situation continue to worsen as peasant uprising increase. So the relationship between the landlord tenant become more and more disparate. So they have different na from each other. That is why President Kizan make a social justice program focused on the purchase of agendas, which were to be divided and sold to tenants. Among his administration, they created the National Rice and Corn Corporation or NAREC. So, they will help the poor tenants as well as the consumers. So, this would be in favor on the peasant farmer as they will assign public defender to assist them in court for the rights to the land. And the Court of Industrial Relations to exercise jurisdiction over disagreement arising from land honor tenant relationship. So, they also continued the Homestead Program to National Land Settlement Administration or NLSA. Among this program is to afford opportunity to own farms to tenant farmers and small farmers from uh, congested areas and to facilitate amalgamation of the, the people in different sections in the Philippines. Again, at the end of of the efforts towards agrarian reform with the Commonwealth failed because they don't have enough budget allocation for the settlement program and the widespread present uprising. So until the World War II happened where Japanese occupied the country to intervene to solve those problems. During the Japanese occupation, the Hukbalahap controlled whole areas of central Luzon. Landlords who supported the Japanese lost their lands to peasant, while those who supported the Hokbalaho earned fixed rentals in favor of the tenants. Unfortunately, the end of war also signaled the end of gains acquired by the peasants. Upon the arrival of the Japanese in the Philippines in 1942, peasant and workers' organizations grew strength. Many peasants took up arms and, and identified themselves with the anti-Japanese group which we call the Hukbalahap or Hukbu ng Bayan Laban sa Hapon. So that's it about the land ownership in the Philippines under Americans and I hope you've learned something and keep safe everyone.